Hi, Nikolai from Bunga Samples here, and today, like any good developer, I am very excited. Not because I'm releasing something new, although I kind of am, but because Bunga Samples turns five. Five years and running, I think that calls for a celebration, and I'm doing that in a couple of different ways. One of them is to release a try pack that lets you try every single sound in the Bunga Samples catalog for just one dollar. Now, I would love to give this try pack to you for free, but unfortunately, my sales internet hosting service provider thingy says that the file is too big for them to host for free, so I have to turn it into a product and charge something for it. Therefore, one dollar it is. Sorry about that, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I think, at least for one dollar, it is tremendous value for money. And uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at everything your one dollar gets you. So five years ago, I was working in a World War II bomb shelter turned recording studio in Copenhagen in Denmark, and I was working a lot with sample libraries. One of the problems everybody was trying to solve with sample libraries was the idea of voice stacking. If you record, let's say, a violin section of 10 players, turn it into a sample library and then play a free note chord, now you're hearing 30 violins play, and that's not realistic. But I thought to myself, does it have to be? Isn't the great thing about recorded music and sample libraries that we can do whatever we want? We could make the impossible possible. So I had this crazy idea of creating a string texture library where you could change the density of the texture and the dynamics by fading in more players. Now it was a ton of work. It basically meant recording uh, every articulation nine times with the player in a new position each time instead of just doing it once and then programming it in such a way that when you move the mod wheel you're fading in more and more players. That is the concept behind Bunker Strings, and uh, that's how Bunker Sable started. Then came Bunker Strings Volume 2, the Harmonium, and a bunch of other products. And now, five years later, uh, 2024 is looking to be our busiest year yet, with quite a few releases this year. So stay tuned for that. Oh, one more thing. I'm also announcing a competition where you are, in fact, only allowed to use the sounds in this tri pack. On the upside, you can win the entire Bunga Samples catalog, um, so I think it's worth giving it a go. There's more info about the competition in the description below and on the Bunga Samples website. But first, let's take a look at what you actually get for your one dollar, and I'll show you a brief overview of each instrument and basic functionality. This is not an in-depth walkthrough that would take hours, but if there is a particular instrument that you want to learn more about or learn more about its features, I recommend watching the dedicated walkthrough for that product on the Bunker Samples website. So uh, let's take a look at what you get. First up, the harmonium. This is a deep sampled reed organ from 1910. Normally it comes with six stops. These three would be this register here, and these three, they're yellow keys. However, in the tri pack, you only get one stop. If you try to select one of the others, you get this warning that's telling you, sorry, can't have that. But on the upside, for this stop, you do get full functionality as well as all the extra noises and everything is included. So you can turn it on and off here, and you have the sound of the stop being pulled in and out, even wet round robins. And it sounds like this. You can tune it up an octave or down an octave by dragging on the number there. We have some noises over here. We already talked about the stops. You can also turn the sound of the pump on and off. And you can do that with the green key switch here. If you need to program it. Sound of the keys, you can turn them on and off. If you turn them up, you get the sound of all the key noises with round robins. So that adds a lot of extra realism. You have real attack and release on by default, but if you want an ADSR envelope, you can have that as well. And then we have a bunch of effects per stop. To get the controls for an effect, you open it by clicking on the writing and you turn it on here. So this is a pit telephone and here's the intensity slider. Up here you control the speed. Right now it's one eighth note. We can change that to, let's say, a sixteenth. If 
you drag all the way down, you get to the free mode, which is Hertz, and you can change that by dragging here. Here you have a pulse width control. And of course you have other shapes as well. You just drag up and down directly on this graphic. So now it's a sine wave. Volume control, exactly the same controls. And then you have a bunch of other effects here. Chorus, rotator, form and filter, and dirt. And for dirt, you have different types. You can have distortion or saturation. And they have a subtype. You just change by clicking here. You can also send to the delay one and two and the two reverbs that are down here. Don't forget to turn the send on. And uh, that's pretty much the harmonium. Bunker Perk. On what turned out to be my last night in the bunker, I decided to record some of the sounds that were part of the bunker. So I walked around recording the sound of slamming metal doors, hitting big metal objects, all the big things that are in a typical bunker. And uh, that turned into Bunker Perk many years later. You don't get all the sounds, obviously, but you do get a small teaser with 12 different sounds from the bunker. The important thing to know about this library is that all the controls you see, except for two compressor, which is a global control, are per sound. So to choose a sound for editing and changing, you just play it. So now we're editing that, and you can see the controls updated. We can move it back on the virtual states, and you can select between all these different rooms. You can make it wider or narrow. I can tune it up and down. We can cut into the sample. You can make it a one shot. You have a filter here and that can be velocity controlled. So close the filter, turn up velocity control all the way. And that kind of simulates the dynamic layers that are not actually there. EQ, this changes the Q, this changes the frequency, and this the gain. And if you want to reset the EQ just for this sound, you can do that with this button. Punts is a transient control, and if you keep turning it up, it will also start compressing the tail. So that can make it quite snappy. And tube compressor makes everything sound gritty. You also get all these sounds in reverse in their own bespoke reverse engine. So basically it's the same thing, it just plays everything backwards. The real trick to this engine is this control here. Play, hit, unrelease. Right now it's off. Now we turned it on. So when I press down the key and hold, it's going to play the reverse sound. And the moment I let go of the key, it's going to play the forward sound. So if you time it right and it's very easy to edit the length of the MIDI note after the fact, then all you have to do to get sort of a transition effect into a hit is to line up the end of the MIDI note to the beat that you want to hit. Very useful. The only other thing to note about this is the controls unlinked and linked. This basically means that now you're affecting the reverse and the hit at the same time. You can see the hit controls here, the reverse controls here. But if you unlink them, you could put the reverse sound way back in the room, tune it up a little bit. You can have the hit narrow in front. Now we get this. Other than that, all the controls are exactly the same. Bunker Strings Volume 1, the library that started it all. You have the articulations down here, but this is the only one you get for violin. If you select the others, you get the warning again. Attack and release, stereo width, drag up and down, or you can make it mono. Command or control click to reset. Then you have expression, which is just the volume control mapped to CC11. And the most interesting part, the density slider. So when the density is at the bottom, you're hearing three players, and when it's at the top, you're hearing nine. And if you add in the expression, it can be very expressive.
If that's not dense enough for you, you can skip the round robins it has now and layer the two so now you get twice the ensemble size. Moving on to the viola, same thing except here you get the drumstick tremolo and nothing else. This sound is really good for horror if you play like a cluster. Cello, same thing again. Here you get the loud pitch tremolo. And basically all these sounds you get in volume one are pointillistic. The idea of many short notes coming together to form a long note, a sort of cloud of sound. And for bass you get the soft version of that sound, one of my favorites in this library. And to the best of my knowledge, not available in any other same library. You don't get any of the short in volume one, sorry about that, but it is a tri-pack. Bunga Strings Volume 2 is the same idea as Volume 1, controlling density by changing ensemble size on the fly, but the articulations are more bold, long textures rather than pointillistic. So here you get one of the combination articulation, tremolo burst normal into tremolo burst sul punt. It sounds like this. So basically the players are just holding a long note and then adding these random little bursts of tremolo. So you can sort of hear the tremolo wandering around in the ensemble and uh, I just think it's a very, very cool effect. In volume two, you do get a short pads, but only the violas. And this is worth talking about because this is plectrum pizzicato. This is pizzicato, but play it with a guitar pick. And not only that, you also get some strums, which are non-tonal and some pizzicato tremolo. There is a clever articulation switching system in this patch and you access that by clicking on settings. Right now it's set to key switches. They live down here at C minus two, but I prefer the hot key MIDI C C. So the idea is the default sound is just a pizzicato. But if you hold down the hot key, you get the strum. And you'll see that the tremolo switch is CC64, which of course is the sustain pedal. So you're playing along your pizzicato. That's the short notes in volume two. Very cool as used by Johnny Greenwood on his fantastic score for There Will Be Blood. For the cellos, you get super sultasto pulses, very quiet, very beautiful. And for the basses you get octave pulses, half the section is playing an octave higher. So again, you can hear the idea with these textures is that they sort of walk around these section. The players are not playing rhythmically or in sync with each other, which was the whole point. I have also put a couple of the freebies that you can already download from the website in the pack. You get Gangsta's Paradise. Extra Light 
This is a sort of leftover from the Intimate Viola sessions. It's just a single harmonic symbol, but stressed across the entire keyboard. So well outside the normal playing range of the viola. And that allows me to do some cool stuff like control bow noise. Here's the same harmonic, but without the mute. And you can crossfade between the two. You get all these same mic positions as you do in Intimate Viola. You have individual control here. You can even send individual amounts of delay and reverb sets. So if we turn the delay on here, you'll hear it. Dynamics, you also have a bunch of controls. You can simulate dynamics. It's a high boost, low cut. You can expand the dynamic range so that just controls how much this slider affects volume. And you can uh, turn the velocity control all the way off or on if you like to bring out just, let's say, the middle note in a chord or whatever. Same controls as Intimate Viola a Ramea. Speaking of, you get free sounds from Intimate Viola. You get this one, sustains Concertino triple P, but you only get the bottom two octaves. You do get all the mic positions, so you get the inside mic, which is literally a tiny microphone placed inside the viola. They're super close, right on top of the instrument, and then a more standard close, mid and far perspective. And that makes this library very versatile. You don't get any of these sounds, but you can just keep clicking through until you get to this one, which is also available. Bow Pulse is normal. Same principles as in uh, Bunker Strings Volume 2, random pulses. Again, you don't get the bottom octave of this articulation because you can't have everything. You get one more articulation here. You get harmonics concertino, and these are very beautiful. And finally, you get off-world volume one. You don't get the full range, you just get one octave and one sound. This is basically a pits bent compendium, and it was made using that instrument over there on my wall, a Vietnamese Dan Bo, which is a monochord with a handle uh, that's stretching a single metal string. And uh, I played it the wrong way. I bowed it with a violin bow, and I may also have sent it through some uh, heavy distortion and reverb, but the result sounds like this. So you have three main controls on the interface and you just drag sideways on these sliders. Length, now it's very short slide. Which were very long. I should also note that the note you play on the keyboard is the target note. So if you want to land on an F, play an F. It's that simple. You can change direction. So now it slides up. Or you can have no slide at all. You can also turn on velocity control, so if you play hard, it slides up. And if you play soft, it slides down.
steps is how many steps the slide is from one half step to four half steps. So. You also have a bunch of effects and they're all turned off right now. You turn them on by clicking on the name. So now the gate sequence is on. And you can play around with these controls. There's intensity, you can have a hard or soft version. So that's off for volume one. In the full version, you get uh, a whole lot more sounds, but I wanted to uh, at least give you a taste. Off for volume two is also made from the same Dan bow over there on the wall, but it focuses on pads and textures, and again, played in only the wrong ways. You only get three sounds, but you do get two channels, so you can layer these three sounds. To find the sound you can use, look for the ones that says try pack anything else and you get the dreaded warning again. The idea here is that you have two LFOs per channel and you can draw any LFO shape that you want and then you can use that to modulate anything that has this slider next to it. The two dots selects the upper or lower LFO. So now the volume in this channel is being modulated by the upper LFO to this amount. You can change the speed of the LFO by dragging up and down on the number here. So now it's just one eighth note. And you can see that's also controlling the cutoff on a filter in slot one for this channel. This instrument has built-in help, you just click here, and you also can load some master effects, you have velocity control and expression, whole bunch of fun stuff. So that is the sounds included in the tri-pack. If you fancy any of these sounds, of course I'm also running a uh, birthday sale where everything is back to intro price. So uh, there are some good deals to be had if you find anything you like. Oh, and don't forget about the uh, competition. As I said, more info about that on the website and in the uh, description down below. I hope you get to enjoy uh, these sounds and uh, I look forward to hearing what you make with them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.